Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO The Losses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Dixie Kratlever, but the end of last episode never really happened as through the fire and flame still grows stronger. The Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court boomed out of the Senate Chamber 4. The official votes regarding the guilt or innocence found within the President of the United States, George C. Wallace, have been collected to a final estimate. President Wallace sat nervously, clenching his fist until his knuckles grew wide, almost fronting Dr. Sadowski. The numbers hardly mattered as they were muttered out of the old man's mouth. Only two things mattered. The first not guilty verdict, counted by another count of votes, followed by the second declaration of not guilty. Wallace could hardly contain himself after hearing the Chief Justice utter those beautiful words, using the energizing victory to raise a vicious fist in the air. After a few pictures, Wallace took a great amount of time to shake the hands of each and every attorney on the legal team, with an especially emphasis expression of thanks offered to Dr. Sadowski for managing to bring together the case and beat out the United States House of Representatives and Senate to achieve a secure victory for him. Well, how'd I go about paying you back after all this, Doc? Wallace asked. Sadowski responded with a prompt. Why, thank me. The history books will do all that. Along with the paycheck. All around the defense, however, the representatives in charge of bringing the president to trial shared looks of shame and bafflement, as each were asking how on earth did Wallace manage to slip out of that one. No matter what, though, Wallace was quick to, to show face by giving thanks to all that stood beside him. That was the only emphasize when the president walked out outside alongside his team, greeting the news teams of reporters who usually shoot away. This time, all the news stations would hear their proclamations of innocence by President George C. Wallace. After a return to the Oval Office to complete rest, to complete the rest of the workload cut out for that day, the President of the United States retreated to his bedroom with his wife Lorene, where they enjoyed a night filled with a word or with a word the couple had not heard in months. Tranquility. Wallace now, Wallace forever, Wallace. To, well, Wallace now, Wallace tomorrow, Wallace forever. My apologies about that. But which, I was thinking about this. Why is there no option for us to see the status of, uh, like, what's going on? Like, I, like impeachment votes, this is the way we're currently leaning, this is the way that people are currently not leaning. Why can't we see something like that happen? Just because, you know, for the love of God, we have 79 right-wing senators. And not all of them, obviously, will support us. But even if you only had 50 or 51, like, that's still 20 gone that you can still have and be okay. So, I wish there was a way we could see what the thoughts of senators would be to a degree i don't know i would like to see that reworked but of course we're still slightly in the past gauging indian interests we're doing the perth conference and we'll probably do subsidies for fruit several weeks ago representatives from the uh kml and dole and the united fruit have approached our ambassadors about the renewed interest we have shown in fostering better trade relations with the tra central american nations and numerous boardroom meetings the professor willingness to conduct fair business with his relevant governments once again while flashing charts after chart of market trends quarterly reports revenue projections risking or risk analyses and other such indicators of economic performance. To conclude, they droned almost in unison. Our executives are shared in the belief that direct investment into their facilities and infrastructure may be needed to fully utilize the region's potential with respect to select harvest crops. Such measurements will, or measures will have to be to have the twofold effects of multiplying production by orders of magnitude within the next 10 years and granting Americans a much larger share thereof. Beneath the polite technical language, however, the message was clear. America's largest fruit companies have heard about the pl plans for Central America and they want in, preferably with federal aid money to buy out the farmland for themselves, luckily for them. Corporate corporation exactly was what we need. The agreement is fast-tracked. Jubilant cheers echoed across Congress as President Wallace and his associates celebrated the passage of the fast-track legislation. With a more arduous political or potential of endless debate, Amendment and the derided filibuster swept aside. Uh, the preparations for the vote on the PFTA can now go ahead without any imp impediment by Congress. A cheerful President Wall spoke with uncharacteristic candor to assembled journalists on Capitol Hill, uh, promising that with the bill fast track, he would do everything he can to bring about the establishment of the free trade zone as soon as possible. While this is not the final victory of the actual, and the actual vote still needs to be secured, the Senate agreed to the fast track may serve as a positive indicator to the chances for the bill itself. Almost the final vote. An economic aid for Central America? Well, the sums allocated to the proposal to extend economic assistance to Central America as part of the Perth Agreement aren't hard backbreaking. The distribution of funds or funding leaves plenty open to question. Perhaps as a function of the limited resources available in the State Department indicated to the smaller nations of Latin America, this proposal is largely written by outside consultants from the private sector, and it shows, arguing that the national governments of Central America have capacities or restraints that prevent the adequate or uncorrupt distribution of funding for infrastructure projects, the proposed development package places outsized importance on American corporates a long presence in Central America, particularly the United Fruit Company and the Castle & Coke. The two companies dominate the economies of the region and their exports of agricultural produce, owning shipping, transportation, and media throughout much of Central America. Boss was a business-friendly politician, to be sure, but achieving a leveling of international trade through reduced tariffs was an entirely different beast from further entrenching the dominance of the American monopolies in the Caribbean. If nothing else, the outsized role played by the United Fruit and Castle Cook, or Castle and Cook would squeeze out other Americans looking to expand into Central America. The development program states the fruit companies don't eat any more freebies, which we're doing right now, which will give us more growth, so... 
Well, the program says, and then a wall of dollars. After weeks of tense negotiations, we've made good progress on the nitty-gritty details of streamlining tariffs and paving the way for a mutual opening of the protected sectors of the Pacific or free Pacific nations. It is in itself a momentous achievement, which will give American industry the means to establish itself abroad without worrying about being squeezed out of a hostile market. As soon as the ink dries, tariffs, duties, and onerous regulations within a region compromising, over two-thirds of the world's economy will disappear. More importantly for us, all tariffs, duties, and onerous regulations that have stonewalled America from accessing, accessing the Far East in its own terms in the past will vanish overnight. <clears throat> and in doing so, we will quarantine our allies with the economic predation of the co-prosperity sphere on the doorstep, or promise the remaining neutral nations a viable economic rationale to resist the siren song of Tokyo. And we should get the U.S., Australia, New Zealand assistance grant, or, and then we get to negotiate the terms. Now that the administration has managed to collect our possible allies together, it's time to begin settling the terms of our agreements in Perth and attempt to fully solidify the Pacific Trading Zone consistently. We've managed to see that our offerings to these democratic nations have been viewed with great respect and honor, and together, it appears that our plan to curb the Japanese power over these three nations is succeeding more and more. Each collection has a different part to play in the trading agreements, be it Oceania's o o stock profits, Central America's fruit and agricultural exports, and India's production market, but no matter what, the U.S. of A is benefiting, and the Empire of Japan is suffering. Having said this, the Indian government continues to make arguments, with some terms involved in the agreements, thus we must do all we can to maintain the strength of the Pacific Trading Zone during the conferences of Perth. But we have some comments, such as, um, let's see, someone says, I got sunburns on my back, but this video alleviated the pain. Someone says, clicked on 360p, waited 5 minutes, and got HD. Someone says, be American. Someone says, do a Yoki campaign. Probably, I assume that's Yaki, but maybe Yoki. Someone says, uh, you said you wouldn't do the segregation stuff, didn't you? I also hate segregation. Um, so, and someone else replies, why play TNO if you're not going to do a little trolling? So, I mean, I, I didn't know from, like, when I, before I started this campaign that we had to be a little, a uh, little fun here by doing that stuff. I didn't realize that, because, you know, this one says, good chance, uh, uh, that basically was the coverage. It's not exactly subtle. Thurman's adamantly opposed any social welfare reform. Same thing down here, I think. Yeah, he's adamant to any social welfare reform. So I didn't realize that at the time. But we also talk about investments in Brazil. Coffee, soybeans, beef, and rubber, you name it. Brazil has it. Blessed by millions of square miles of both temperate plain land and tropical jungle, our large trading partner to the south has immense reserves of natural resources, both exploited and pristine. If handled properly, Brazil can grow to a point where it can easily feed its own people and industries while still having millions of tons to export abroad at the same time. But that's in the far, far future right now, though. Our priority should be ensuring that as much of Brazil's resources go to feed our people and our industries instead. By assisting our corporations in establishing Brazilian subsidiaries, through subsidizing the construction of new farms and factories, we can effectively reserve part of Brazil's vast natural wealth for America's purposes alone. The U.S. Australia New Zealand Assistance Grant. The President of Walls thumbed through the summary of the tome provided by the Secretary of State, Fulbright, even a strong thermo paced back and forth animatedly in the Oval Office. The Australians and New Zealanders agreed to lower their tariffs on American mining and agricultural machinery in exchange for reciprocal reductions on coal, copper, and dairy imports. Wall said chewing on his pen, sounds good to me, Fulbright, good work. Like heck it is, Sermon spat, facing off against President Wallace across the Oval Office desk. What are we going to tell the coal miners in West Virginia and the farmers in the Great Plains? Calm down, Strom. Wallace looked up from his papers without rising from his chair. America's still the largest single producer of foodstuffs and crucial minerals in the OFN. I'm sure they'll still be competitive on price, and once you factor the transport costs and the impact of our regulatory cuts in, try telling that to Joe Smith about how the MPP gave a handout to the Australians while selling his business down the river. Thurman threw his hands up in exasperately uh, tone. For Christ's sake, I can hear the already talking points now. I think we'd be more pissed off if we left Australia and New Zealand in the cold to be abandoned just like Hawaii in 45 while I shot back. We're going to face down the Japanese, and that's always, always a winning message. The free world f fights together or dies alone. Quote agreements. Warily joining. I don't know about this one. Um, we'll see if it does happen, but maybe not. It's already October 7th, but a united urban America. President Wallace took a good time to enjoy the sunny, breezy day that he knew God had blessed him with. The roads here was not an easy one, especially now that it's been a little while since the vandals had their little standoff with the Texas Army National Guard. It was at that moment, as he looked out, that he realized a distinct truth. He hadn't heard of reports of a riots in weeks, not even a protest. For the first time in a long time, President Wallace was able to enjoy himself for having bridged the gap between Americans, even if he wasn't personally the biggest fan of it. Rather than his own support from the uh, right-wing column, instead a crowd of moderates had called and congratulated him for how he handled the standoff in Texas, saying that the tactical mindset presented by Wallace and his handling of the crisis surely earned their vote from him. While he hadn't heard much from the, some of the hardline friends, he could still not but not care. Well, he could, couldn't but help couldn't help but not care. America's finally moving forward even just by a little. President Wallace had felt such strong emotions after the past few weeks that he decided to capitalize on his good mood. He was his own man, and with it, he snuck out of the White House, telling the secretary to call him in case anything pops out. Wallace got into his car, decided to drive around the local Maryland cityscape. There, even though it wasn't his preference, he saw the fruits of his labor all around. Blacks and whites competing in the same stores, eating at the same rest restaurants, even working together to give a facelift to old black neighborhoods. The new America was something to behold. The president thought, happy about it or not, Wallace continued to drive around the area and enjoy himself. 
On his way back to the White House, Wallace happened to stop at a red light next to a formerly segregated school. They saw a little, uh, saw a white crossing guard welcoming a little black girl for a new class at the start. The president offered a smirk as he began to drive up the road. So it's only fair, right? The right wing of the Yaki party is growing. More national daddyism, more conservative democracy, but authoritarian democracy going down? Well, that's not good for us now, is it? Oh, and we get to repeal civil rights. That's like, that's like the last thing we could probably do if we really wanted to. Um, brothers in arms. That's only seven, 21 days. It's not bad, especially before the elections. Because right now we are doing negotiate the terms. 23 days. We'll get to October 30th, 31st. Might give us time to get figure out which one we'll do this one. Let's do. It's authorized early. Promptly pass the Perth Act. Oh, it's one day. It was authorized early. It's not authorized early. So maybe we'll be forced to do this one. Our administration has been more than successful in our interconnecting of the various regions around the world into the Perth Pact, and thus onto the Pacific Trading Zone. Already, the agreements have been ratified domestically as well. In this case, the Senate will has willingly approved of our designs and put forth into the Perth Pact, and allowed our ideas to succeed. The citizens of the United States, along with the peoples of Oceania, Central America, and India, have consistently felt this crushing weight of Japan's heel dig into their backs by means of economic and political strong arming. Now, however, we shall turn the tide within the international sphere and put Japan on the economic defense, with the loss of its potential assets. That, furthermore, our administration will be able to say to successfully fought back against the Japanese and show that by the will of the National Progressive Party, does the country step forward into progress. The India Infrastructure Initiative. The United States government's formally announced uh, that the Indian Infrastructure Initiative, the brainchild of the U.S. President George Wallace, has been active, activated effective earlier this morning. The U.S. government is releasing a colossal sum of money to India and has urgently requested a consultation to work out how the funds will be disbursed and how the projects will be managed. We have urgent needs, namely the social development and education project, so critical to both our nation's future and ensuring the human security of our people. The Americans, on the other hand, are looking to raise a quality of life for our urban populace, which uh, they reason will continue to grow and form a large consumer base for American products in the future. Rural development. Hmm. Raise the quality of life. Middle class. Middle class really is the key to development. Or even raise the quality of life for urban populace. Eh, I want to do urban rural, but middle class seems well. Also, Yemen has broken out into civil war, but we're already doing really quite well here. Um, there's really not much going on here. I mean, we could do this maybe and just, just blow up all the horses there. We need results. We get results. The long days of discussion, debate, and theorization, analytics, and diplomacy have finally concluded as the first conference came to an end late in the evening. Uh, signifying a number of direct developments in regards to the connection of the members of the Organization for Nations. President Wallace, along with the entourage of American figures employed in aiding the conference, has been at the center of it all and experienced success for Sam. Earlier that day, President Wallace said, Representative Munez of the people of Honduras will now exchange Honduran nations regards to the proposed opening up of American markets to the agricultural goods of his representative country. As Honduran men approached the center of the room to produce a slew of agreements with American notions of deals for Honduras in exchange for a restriction of trade against members of the co-prosperity sphere, James, I have to say, I may be a southern man with strong beliefs regarding the powers of our country, but I have to congratulate ourselves. We're really winning them out here, Wallace whispered into the secretary's ear. I agree, sir. They're eating it up out here. Now, I have to say, sir, perhaps we've underestimated how much Japanese pushed around the people of these countries, sir. Fulbright said, what do you mean, whispered Wallace? Well, sir, to be honest, think about it. The Japanese created heck on earth for the United States. Think about all those countries, sir. We may be experienced just the same without what we had prepared. Fulbright proposed. At that moment, President Wallace took a look around. Everyone here had a different story of the same theme as pre President of the United States. However, much more devastation was wrought by the Japanese against these countries. Not just during the war, but for years, the Japanese held a chokehold against all of our economies, and when your country hardly has the finances to secure a great economy to combat their interests. Later that day, Secretary Fulbright found the President sitting out in his room, a single hand resting on against his chin. Mr. President, are you all right, Fulbright? A Fulbright asked. James, we're going to get this pact created. We have to do it. Not only do the Americans need this, but all of them in there, the President said. J. William Fulbright dutifully nodded his head in response to the President's growing fury. For everyone who's lost in the dispatch from Cairo. Cairo, Egypt. Regimes in the Middle East these days look like an old rotten tree. Many are wobbling, but it's hard to predict where they'll fall here in Egypt. The situation is no different. Inspired by uprisings in neighboring countries, citizens in Cairo this week took to the streets to protest the government that they claim is more beholden to the Italian interests than their own unrest. A loud, phlegm-filled cop for Mark Daniels, the Chicago Tribune, to look up from his portable typewriter. Standing before him in the cramped hallway of the hotel was a man dressed in the uniform of an Egyptian palace guard. On the corner of his, of his mouth was a large cigar. He removed the cigar and made another guttural noise with his throat. You, the American, asking around for uh, a <clears throat> hand holding the cigar. Sources? Mark gave a confused smile. I'm on a deadline, but yeah, yeah, of course. You are? Uh, the man stuck a cigar back in his mouth. I can get you in the palace for 30 American dollars. Mark Daniels blinked. He blinked again. Do you really have any idea how many people if I had had to bribe already today? The taxi driver was going to let some religious fanatics kill me unless I gave him five bucks. A police officer outside threatened 20 American dollars for a big time scoop, as you say. No one else has his offer, said the man. Based on the expensive cigar, Mark somehow doubted that that was true. Maybe you bring a photographer and five extra dollars and you can get some nice photos for your bosses. Mark massaged the bridge of his nose. The Tribune's or Tribune's accounting department was going to kill him for subsidizing the income of every crook, guard, policeman, and bureaucrat in Egypt, but they knew how to get sources, and he wasn't about to lose out on an exclusive to the effing times. 
He sat down, or sat down his top right and took out his wallet. I'll give you ten bucks. That's final. Now, we have done the Perth Conference, which is great. <sighs> Towards the steel belt. I mean, I want to wait until the election's done. And then we can say, screw everybody. And i got to figure out which way we're going to go through here. I want to court the center. You know what? If we do the steel belt, then we have to do segregate the curricula. That's the thing. We're going to have things to do here, too, but... Because if we go down this way... Big business will hate this. They'll hate it no matter what. South loves us. Yeah. Huh. Because we do need... We could do funding for schools as well. Foolproof plans, segregate states with subsidies. Advanced segregation. Everyone loves us anyways. We could just always end civil rights. We didn't necessarily do that, though. We don't want to necessarily do that, but... Let's see what happens with the elections first. Investor state dispute settlement. After months of success in negotiations, one would be forgiven expecting the similar delegates of the North per or Perth Agreement negotiating parties to be fatigued. Eyes glittering, voices hoarse. The American delegation was counting on him. With a deep bench of negotiators from the state, commerce, and treasury departments, they had taken great efforts to wear their counterparts down over successive days before introducing the innocuously titled Investor State Dispute Settlements Clause. The legal details were labyrinthine and complexity, but at heart, Washington wanted to ensure that American firms would not be subject to frivolous legal disputes from governments or expropriation without due compensation. While Australia and New Zealand might back the proposal, given the robust private sectors and comparable legal framework to the United States, the Central American nations were a different matter. A dominating presence of the United Fruit and other conglomerates in their economies was a matter of considerable controversy among the citizenry, and the conglomerates spent enormous sums protecting their interests. A clause in the Perth Agreement would hopefully put American firms at ease, and for that reason, the negotiating team expected pushback from Central America's socialist governments. As the several negotiators groaned with the new stack of papers brought before them, the Americans buckled up for a fight they hoped that would everyone be too exhausted to start. More coffee? Okay, so... We have to do it with focus. But, we just had the elections. It's November 11th, and this is insane. If you just try to avoid as much segregation as possible, you too can get 93 white... White? <clears throat> Right-wing uh, progressive... Uh, National Party progressives. We're progressive on this channel. We're a bunch of dixocrats here. Flip. Just... If George Wallace, you try to be a man in the center with some slight leanings towards the right, and you try to not do segregation, but Jesus... Bad word, Christ. I mean, good God. Who cares about it? America is a right-wing nation now. of the progressive party. What's the bad word? Also, uh, everything's exploding as well. Uh, we're gonna about to have the oil crisis, but we have $5 billion in reserve. 6.8% growth. No debt currently, for at least for now. So, and Egypt exploded. Oman has exploded, but we're moving around, getting ready for them as well. Like, like, bro. Like, they say there's issues. Actually, that's, that's quite a bit of communist and national social support. I love George Wallace. If you just don't do segregation, it might not be bad. Actually, is it possible to get Joe Biden as a senator? What do you do with a senator? I don't know. I don't know when Joe Biden did anything. But now I have to make a hard decision. We have to make a hard decision. Funding for schools. Right now, they're extremely unhappy. But at this point, we don't care. We're done. We're done with this. I want to reward people from the land of cotton. I really do. I extraordinarily want to do this one. Hurrah, hurrah. The South loves Wallace, as they should. And we definitely want to do that one, too. An ad of the Union. I don't want to forget people in the North as well. Incentivize work. Um, it's going to help us win back a small amount to the South. Court the center. It looks better than the Northern States, but we already look really good. Now this will isolate, doing this route will probably isolate people from the nor north. Actually, it doesn't even look like it. Like, it just it improves your position in the south, which we could probably honestly need, because we haven't been done doing too much segregation. It's a national campaign. I think this just feels better if we do towards this, the steel belt for this campaign, because we are trying to unite the, everyone. Well, we don't consider everyone people, but whatever. I want to do the land of cotton so badly. Uh, the south loves us, but I think I'm going to go with towards the steel belt. Wallace is harsh, but he's fair. The job corps here serve all Americans, not just the ones who voted for him. We'll have to make this program nationwide if it's going to be taken seriously by the public. Wallace will inject the funds necessary to set up the jobs corps offices in every state. What more expenses will broaden the appeal and effectiveness of the program? Who knows? We might just pick up the extra votes in the steel belt while we're at it. Which we already did. We have everybody. Jesus Christ. I mean, we got the ports back. We ha we're balanced between big business and, and the worker. Um, and we've empowered unions for the love of God. As Wallace, what else do we do? We have trying to unify the OFN. Where are we at? Significant oil concessions. Um, it's still it's very high unity here. Of course, like I said, we got the ports back. We're helping out other nations. Uh, we're trying to, like I said, unify the OFN. 
We have we have not repealed civil rights, which pissed off the segregationists, but whatever. Um, like, and we passed Social Security. We passed Medicare. And we have the American worker with quite a bit of state's autonomy. I mean, you know, we let people do and live as they see and they see fit. Mostly. Um, so, like, this has been very interesting. But in Out of the Union, the AFL-CIO hates Wallace. They court integrationist activities. Even in Alabama, deride the president as an enemy of the working man. They betray the center block and their old allies and back the RD's next campaign against the Wallace administration. The AFL-CIO is fully committed to throwing Wallace out of the office in the next election, which didn't happen. At least that's what their leadership says. Beyond closed doors, the union bosses panic about the Wallace plague sweeping the ranks of file. According to an internal poll, a full third of AFL-CIO members supported President Wallace in the last election, and their numbers are only growing. President Wallace is going to use a new Job Corps program to seize a moment and bolster his support base among unions. He'll pull out a new ad for the program in which he meets with ordinary workers, including ones recently employed thanks to the Jobs Act, and tell him he's the best friend that a union man ever had. He'll hopefully expose the disconnect between the labor aristocrats and the members weakening the credibility of the unions in the political scene. This will reel those suckers in. Which maybe we should have done this one earlier because I was waiting so long to do this one. But oh well. Well, I apologize for not showing you everything, but here we're at right now. Um, we've won in Egypt up here. We've won in Oman and Yemen, which is great. We're still fighting in Iraq, which has been god awful, as well as Sudan, which has not been very much fun. Uh, but it's been alright, you know. Other than that, we had the entire oil crisis happen as well. So I just did all the focuses because I've done it before. It doesn't really matter too much. I've, I've shown them before. I've done it before. So we're still trying to do an ad with the Union. But create the Triple C's. The job corps was a good start at relieving unemployment, but there's a good more work to be done. Our nation's precious ma natural resources are under threat, and we need a plenty of manpower to protect them. Time to put our remaining layabouts to work, mackinine uh, our nation beautiful again, or making. We'll also create a temporary work relief program, the Civilian Conservation Corps, which will put unemployed Americans to work building infrastructure and taking care of our natural landscapes. We'll work to build state parks, prevent floods, pave new roads and airways, and so much more. States, of course, will be in control of the structure of the local triple C, so the South may determine work assignments for individuals of each race precisely as they see fit, if, if, if needed. If, if needed. Um, yeah, if needed. So we'll see, you know, this is why we love states' rights. States should have a uh, final say on who gets work because of conditions. Yeah, conditions. Yeah, we love conditions. Oh, oh. The Iranian Civil War, you only about that, but go ahead. You know, uh, circle freedom is all we need. So, god dang it, the Japanese have been giving us a run for our money here. Actually, you guys go here. You guys go into there. You might be able to beat them up here. So, the Iranian Civil War. God dang it. Uh, send volunteers, yeah, please. And also here we're majorly invested, so it is what it is. Um, intensify volunteers? Yeah, why not? And over here, we've got to win quickly and fast, or everyone's going to kill each other. Which, I mean, I guess, you know, it's pretty normal, but whatever. I like it down there, too. At the very least, oh, see? It's very fast. Um, 160 cast. Go down by 100. 50, and there you go. Still have 19 billion in reserves. I mean, oil crafts kind of suck. Temp sacks cut. We still have surplus when we do that. It didn't really give us more growth though, which kind of does suck, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, overall not bad. Uh, so for now, you guys are all allied, which means you got to take out the Imperial State of Iran. I've done this in the past, we, we, where we've been so fast, so unbelievably fast, that uh, it doesn't even matter. Like before the coalition actually breaks down, we have to get back, Dad. We have to have back that. We have to have to have to have that. Go here. No, 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 no. You want to go up here and do this. That. There you go. That's what you want to do. These guys are expanding very quickly in the north, which is not good. we got to get back. I did convert one of the tanks to do this as well, so. Hey, let's get here first. We can probably get over there as well next. We're going to attack us, maybe. Maybe not. Do that as well. Beat all the Japanese soldiers up. We're free down here, too, which is great. Let's continue to try to attack us. It's fine. Whatever. We're going to keep expanding this way down south because the capital is down in Kuwait, which is great. MHP victory in Turkey. Nationalism prevails. Oh, boy. Um, who are we still fighting down here? Is it you guys? Who are you fighting? Why do you still have volunteers down here, then? To Iraq. Yeah, give me that friend. I think at this point, once we get back to it, it'll be over. So, the goal is to get here to get here and then crush these guys down this way, which would be great. Um, yeah, okay, so now the guys have been returned. That's good. 
You guys hold. Don't worry about it for now. Baghdad will be ours. I'm not too worried about that. But y'all, a middle-aged man stood in front of an old rusty piece of machinery. It's sort of a stubby, but will still maintain beard. And his blue overall is dirty enough to be signified he's not afraid to get down to work. But not so dirty implies he can't appropriately take care of himself. The environment was mostly sun, but that wasn't a big issue. A pleasant, rhythmic, vaguely mechanical background noise was to be added later. The man began to speak, looking directly into the camera. Hey, y'all, my name is Rick Hoffman. I'm the chairman of the Pennsylvania Steel Workers Union, and certainly 20 some creative of who somehow was in charge of the production yelled, Cut, 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 cut. Perfectionism was his game, and he wasn't quite satisfied with the shot. Turned to the man, he said, Richard, I really like your performance just now, but could you remember to use people instead of something like y'all? Remember, this isn't after the Rust Belt. You gotta transmit that rugged Midwestern image, if you know what I'm saying. Rick did not know what he was saying, and the slightest bit replied, nonetheless, oh, I, I don't know what you mean with transmitting images and all that, but I've never been a tech guy. But I'm not gonna stop saying y'all, partner. I grew up in Texas and moved to Pennsylvania when I was 24. I just can't throw away my heritage like that. Adam said, listen, man, we only got 30 seconds in this ad, so we can't exactly dive into your personal history here. Can't you just pretend you grew up here? It's for a good cause, man. Richard took a deep breath and closed his eyes, muttered, for America, fine, whatever. I'll act like I'm born and raised in Philadelphia, as long as it helps Wallace, I'm in. Hello everyone, my name is, uh, somebody. I'm a dude. And actually, since Italy's in the chapter, in the chapter, in our organization, Free Nations, help as much as we can. El Duce's disaster. Mussolini's been dead for over a decade, but the father of fascism still gives us more trouble than any dead man except for that one Adolf guy. Siano's mismanagement of foreign policy in the Italian Empire, the turmoil stirred up by the transition to democracy, and the incompetence of the Italian colonial administration has led to an explosion of chaos in the Middle East. This would, not, this would not be our last concern except for two reasons. Firstly, Italy is an extremely valuable ally with a vast influence over the Mediterranean. A powerful military and economic ties with us both and our allies. Secondly, Italy's empire is one of the world's largest producers of oil. And more importantly, of course. And the collapse of their colonial government has dra drastically, uh, uh, dramatically disabled the oil market. Both these are reason enough to intervene, and the only question is the nature of that intervention. Direct intervention. We're going to finish down here. We're going to get up here. Do the best we can. How are we doing over here? We have busting balls, I guess. Yeah. How do we have one? Wait, what? Whatever. God dang it. That's fine. Nice. Still doing some damage. Just so shooting us down a wee bit, but whatever. Um, next we'll go up there if we can. Get these guys in place if we can. That'll be good. Keep these guys in place. Let the choppers go in. Beautiful. Kill that division off. This is, this is the plan the entire time. You're going to hold, though. Because the tanks will move in more than fine. Let's get down here. We'll come up here, too. It'd be A-OK. -okay. Like I said, A-OK. -okay. Good job, guys. So now... Oh, nothing there. Oh, we won. We completely won. Yay! Da Italian dominance in Iraq. Beautiful. And actually, you guys are choppers. To I guess we're there. If anything, you guys go... Hopefully don't get involved in anything else here, so... There you go. All I have to do is invest into there. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I didn't even look at the screen yet. So we have us, of course. Brazil, there's these guys. OFN down here. South... Southern Africa, I should say. Northern Africa, with helping out Egypt and Sudan. And we have the West African Federation. But we have Italy with France. Hungary... Almost literally all the Balkans are with us, except for the Romania, basically. That's insane. That's a very strong little fan. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Ooh. Bye. Who else do we have here? We have no one else here. What the heck? Game, why are you lying to me? Because we know you are. There you go. I just want you to do damage. That's all I want you to do. Just kill them all. You know, that's all. Because now we're going to start go uh, to here, to here, to here. That's all I want. And circle these guys, kill them all off, and then kill these guys, and circle these guys, and kill them all off. You know, that's just, that's just that's the name of the game. <gasps> we have debt? No. We've also done a great job with this presidency. You hang out here. Never mind. Go in. Go, go, go. Beautiful. Go this way and kill them all off. There you go. Just go this way. It's fine. Or hold. Or hold. Oh boy. Oh. What's that? What happened up here? Something happened up here. Really just want to go there. There. There you go. You guys can do that too. Eh, it's only that type of division. It's not that strong, but whatever. 
I did do military austerity earlier, but I've actually we haven't done it yet again, so surplus is not good. But you know what? I'm not sure what else we do with this money, so it's fine. Whatever. Even the Japanese are here. Huh. Go figure. We can't make any more of these airborne divisions, but that's okay. Very beautiful, guys. Very beautiful. Just like all of us, right? Yes. Italy acquires nuclear weaponry. You know what? I think we approve. Uh, let's see. They're more than happy with states' rights. They're happy. It has become a populist party, gathering some support among us and slightly unifying a party, but alienating big business on interest in the West Coast. It's all right. Things happen. Go in. It's fine. Whatever. Way too ahead of time. Sure, scouts. Whatever. Oh, we actually got Tehran too. Creating the triple C's. Beautiful. Yeah, how, do, how do these guys know? Yeah, I'm like, how are they not dead yet? Beautiful. Incentivize work. Part of it slowly get worse. It's fine. Laws and unemployment programs are built around the principle of self-help. We give people jobs so they can work and build our economy. We don't just dole out entitlements. As in order to keep our welfare system economically viable, we need to completely reorient it towards the self-help work programs. We'll also gut funding for the unemployment benefits after implementing the job score and the triple C initiatives. So help save our budget and shouldn't hurt most workers since they'll either already be employed or be eligible for the job score and the triple C assistance. Of course. And some states act with discretion as to which racial groups benefit more from these groups or those programs. That's their prerogative. Gonna pay for this somehow and win us back a small amount from the South. Probably be slowly worsen, but that's alright. What are you guys still doing here? Anything? You're just stuck there forever. Sucks to be them, then. Saying guns the liberals. Well. Okay. Also, the Russian People's Union versus Christian Socialism. Oh, I almost flow. I think I heard this one before. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. The Italians can handle us? No, we're going to send that oil. We need it. Send in the troops. Bail them out. Peace in our time. Mm. Company man. Strangle the Saudis. Feeding the flames. Yeah. That's not bad. Peace in our time, though. Yeah. We go hard in. Incentivize work, though. And court the center. Wallace has a little patience for the center block. Wallace also needs bat their support badly. Wallace poorly needs the center to assure that North will, uh, the North, that his new programs aren't racially biased. Time to give Humphrey a call. President Wallace will recruit center lead Humphrey Huber, or Huber Humphrey. We're going to meet it to our, uh, praising his job creation programs. We'll assure the public that they'll benefit all Americans, regardless of the color, as they put the country to work from coast to coast. This should bind our party closer together and maybe get us a few more votes in the next election. Which, I'm not sure if that's possible, bro. Like, I mean, we're pretty good. We're already at 51%. 93 right-wing senators. I mean, Connecticut's got problems, as well as Del New Jersey and Delaware and Montana, but whatever. Thurman's doing a great job down here. Talmage. Talmage. It's bad when even, uh, what was that one senator? Who is the, uh, even Scoop Jackson doesn't can hold a seat to the right wing part of the party. How we get invest? You know what? Let's invest $19 billion. 3.828%. Give us 0.3 for growth. Was that worth it? Not really, no. More growth, though, even though we have the oil crisis still. Italy and the oil is so good to have, though. Controlled markets, oil crisis sucks. But that's alright. Education is getting better. Oof. Well, it's consumer goods looking. Yeah, they're still building. They're still building a lot of roads and a lot of valley places, too. And now Iran is falling apart again. Get some blackbirds? Sure, why not? Is there only one? No. No. Better have some money. I don't want to send just one.
Well, we'll be able to send more later, I guess. One is better than none, I guess. Where are you at? Right there. There you go. Gotta get a Stefan first, I guess. Scar's still healing, though. Of course, the Japanese are already showing up by here. Of course. Come on. How, how are they able to resist us? Their superiority. Well, I guess we're well, not we a superiority, but we're just gunning them all down. Uh, the American Dream. The last few decades were a dark time for America, certainly, but not anyone would be declared that the human dream or the American Dream has been broken by the years of economic depression and national humiliation was very dead wrong. The National Progressive Party promised to let America rise like a phoenix from the ashes, and arise it did. Every day in the country, a new business opens, a new undertaking is started, and with it, a new opportunity to those who dare dream. To the tyrants and savages, America's back in the game, and this time, it will not allow itself to be beaten so easily. We're going to daring to dream, my friends. We're daring to dream. Good job, guys. You by yourself are going to struggle quite a bit. Okay, send two more. Thank God. Jesus, why can't we send those guys at the same time? There you go. And there you are. Nice. That should up solve. Es Esfehan. Sorry, y'all. I don't know my Iranian very well. So, this ain't looking too bad. I want you in here too. All of y'all in here. Wow, they took over so much part of the country already. That's insane. I mean, you guys can keep trying, but you're going to keep losing every single time you do it. The goal is to beat the living crap out of these people as much as possible. They have no factories, and they're going to get supplied very well by the Japanese puppets. Puppet masters, but you know, whatever. Go here. We actually take the territory, just beat them up. I want these people to all be gunned down. So we can add a long knives, very nice, will last forever, very good, very good. Very good. My goodness, they're all over the place. They're like bugs, they're everywhere. Uh, you guys go here, I want you guys to go here. If I could be radical and just go up to Tehran and go up to Sa Sari, that'd be great, but I kind of doubt that we can. Go to the center. American Dream 2. Let's go there immediately. Looking not too good. Or you guys could hold it and we just cu cut across this way, actually, instead. Oh, God. I mean, come on. How much? How many divisions do they have, for the love of God? That's insane. That's insane. The game must be cheating or something. They have that many divisions? They have up to 22. There's no way. There's no flipping way that they can have field that many divisions. Well, our guys are given nothing. Come on. No, oh, yeah, go there. You're not going to encircle us, you son of a gun. Come on, stop auto seeking so hard. You can go here. You want to do that type of crap to us? We need a way out quickly. Go there. Force it. Come on, move, 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 move. God dang it. Move faster. Jesus Christ. You're not going to let him move. No, sir. Nope. These divisions are going to die. Thank God we got him. Hold. Please tell me that cut down other divisions quite a bit. It's ridiculous. Alright. Die. 
We don't want to expand too much in this direction because we want them to struggle on that front too. So. Nice. Should be able to beat those guys up. American Dream. Guys are destroying another division there too. Um, the company man. Today is clean and honorable warfare are over. Today, wars aren't won by armies, they're won by superfusion and dirty tricks. If that means we have to resort to backstabbing and intrigue to beat the fascists, so be it. We're going to kick off operations in the Middle East soon, but before that, we may need eyes on the ground, and we've got the perfect man for the job. E. Howard Hunt is an expert in covert actions. He is a veteran of the Cuban operation and many other Central American operations, served as a station guard in Mexico for a time, and has gathered a cohort of excellent operatives. Some of his methods are rather controversial among the CIA, but the results speak for themselves. If we want to get away in the Middle East, he's the best company we've got to offer. My goal is just try to beat the living crap out of these divisions, but they're just so many, my gosh. I'm just trying to gun them all down. How much manpower do they got? 71. Jesus Christ, they need to stop having so many babies here. Can we increase the amount of uh, planes we have here? You were kicked off, guys. Come on. Faster, 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 faster. Come on. You're little helicopters. You should be able to move faster than this. That's what we want to see. That's exactly what we want to see. Kill them off. Nice. Gun them down, boys. Gun them all down. They're still doing the same tactics as they did earlier. How many times do we need to teach you this lesson, old man? Good thing the AI is relatively stupid. Uh, starting a fire, the oil crisis is going to get worse before it gets better. With every major international power having a stake in the crisis, we're going to make the situation unmanageable for our enemies while staying in control, staying in control ourselves. This means hiring local warlords and nomads, giving them guns, and turning them on the Saudis. This means giving as much support as we can to the Italian back regimes while making sure they don't slip from our grasp. This also means our agents and advisors on the ground ensure that the governments we choosing or we choose are the ones winning. Agent Hunt and his men have their orders and are beginning operations against German and Japanese back forces already. The Middle East will burn, and that's for certain. What's important is that we're the ones ruling the ashes. Are you kidding me? How are they so flippin' strong? Jesus, what the heck? Seriously, this is they're broke what is are they cheating or something? Like what the heck is going on here? Like what what's going on? I don't understand this anymore. Oh god, you know, I might have to use consequences. This is ridiculously stupid. This is infuriatingly stupid. Just gun them down. Can I send any more volunteers yet? No? Come on. Why can't we send guns to the liberals? Go here. Every division they have, I mean, just, it doesn't make any sense. Another division destroyed, but it's not going to be enough. I want you to go in. I want you to go up here, too. Oh, boy. Come on. There you go. Going. Another division's gotta die. Beautiful. Here, you you don't need to do that. Just stay there for now. Okay, if anything, go there. How do they produce so many divisions? Starting the fires nice though. I like starting fires. Strangle the Saudis. Two primary enemies for our Italian allies to deal with, and the most internationally connected one is the Saudis. Thousands of barrels of crude oil ship from the ports every day to refine around the world, making them one of the richest countries in the world. This already of oil can be cut by the U.S. Navy, but if, if the Saudi economy will suffer greatly. Once we cut off Saudi oil shipments, they'll be forced to submit sooner or later. And then the sun shall never rise. Japanese access to oil has been a cornerstone of their foreign policy for decades. 
Ever since Hirohito took the throne, the fascists took the country. They've been looking for ways to get oil to feed their tanks, and especially the Imperial Japanese Navy. Now that one half of the Middle East is fine with the other half, the Japanese have a perfect opportunity to black or back a winner and gain access to a reliable and plentiful oil supply. This score is absolutely unacceptable to the American government. Admiral Holloway has proposed a plan to expand the Gulf blockade, include interdicting non-Saudi international ships. While it will require additional resources, Holloway's plan, or Holloway's plan, should be reliably keeping any Japanese support out of the region, an important step to reestablishing Italian control. Which, like I said, is very, very important. You're not going to win there, you son of a gun. You will not expand further this way. You want to beat us up, Japan? Here. Suck on Japan. Don't even go that direction, though. Um, the goal is to continue letting them come down, 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 so we can encircle them more. So really focus on the center here, because this is ridiculous that we can't send any more volunteers. That's absolutely stupid. Why do you keep going down here? God dang it, because we keep losing the god dang thing there. Look at that. That's nice. It's not bad. I don't know debt Japan's in, though. Get out of the Japanese attack, because that means we get to attack. The goal is that I'm just my main goal is to reduce their manpower as much as possible, even though they're literally like increasing it. Oh, good. Go here. Um, this is very risky. We could do something like that, maybe. Maybe. Assassin Jose Ignacio Ruki. Let's see. Yeah, it's gonna be too dangerous to do this. Push here. Don't go in though. Let him do this. Spring of the Saudis. Sun shall never rise. Feed the flames. The kind of diplomatic words can only get so far. Moral support of Italy must be backed with military power, or it's entirely meaningless. The Italian war effort hasn't been entirely defeated, but progress in restoring control over the Middle East has been dangerously slow, and the station chief Colby reports there may be internal factions plotting against the government due to the handling of the crisis. If we want to keep Italy under our influence, military intervention is, of course, necessary. Let's go in. That's another division to eliminate, but, you know, it's one less than they'll have. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, look at that. Russian People's Union. Yeah. Good job, guys. Nice. To serve Russia? That's nice. Good job, guys. Hang out for now. Just don't get encircled either. These guys are a problem, but they're still thrown on the side for these guys, too, so I'm not really worried about that too much. Hey, these guys exist? Kill them. But don't go in. Uh, cool. Uh, 1980s. Here. I'll grab this, too. It's fine. I want to come here and kill them all off. Uh, actually, if we could do this, maybe. We can throw these guys down here too. Beat these guys up. That might work. God, my own problems just suck. Where are they now? Why don't you go here? Go there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Do it before they... Ugh, you effing ding-dongs, come on. I hate this sometimes, man. It sucks so much. Keep them in place. Okay, that's good. At least you kept them in place. Exactly what we wanted. But sunset in Bahrain. Same with us back to the setting sun. E. Howard Hunt, CIA operative extraordinaire. Grin as though through the binoculars. Through his binoculars, he watched the three Japanese cargo ships explode in a tree of enormous fireballs. They were, of course, flying the thigh, the tie thag, thag, flag, uh, but you had to be a darn fool not to see that through. Well, I couldn't help but uh, uh, feel a certain trauma at this, though the war was far from over. There was a coup de grace, a slap in the Emperor's face, and there wasn't a darn thing those sniveling dudes could do about it without admitting that they were running guns to the pan Arabists. It had been a good few months. All in all, his boys had, with great success, managed to covertly destroy Japanese spy networks across the Middle East and impede their shipments of material to the guerrillas. No doubt the Japanese precisely what was going on, but can retaliate with us without escalating tension with America. Also, it hope that their nearest base of influence is all the way to over in Bengal. Hun inhaled deeply, uh, enjoying the smell of the beauty of heavy uh, sea air, now tempered with a distant reek of smoke. Down in the port, firemen and coolies ran around like headless chickens, as ships burned and slowly sank into the harbor. He found his agents and tracked them as they made their way through the crowd and slipped away one by one. 
Stowing his binoculars on a stretch, feeling his vertebrae pop, and then made his way leisurely down the hills, the harbor burned behind him. Into the gathering dusk, just like in Africa. Operation Checkmate. The Saudis may have a great deal of control over the country, but not everyone is satisfied with the current state of governance. Our agents have made contact with Nasir al Said, leader of the Arabian Peninsula People's Union, and made him an offer he can't refuse. We've created plans to fund an attempt uh, by his organization to overthrow the Saudi king. The odds of his plan ending with al Said in charge of Arabia are quite low, but the odds of it increasing anti Saudi sentiment and destabilizing the regime are quite high. The CIA has a high level of confidence in this plan, and the director Helms is requesting our approval to go through it, and subverting the Pan Arabists. The Ba'atists are a dangerous group, insisting on forming a separate power block in the Middle East, based on Arab nationalism and extreme distaste for Western powers interfering with their affairs. Fortunately, they are scattered and indecisive, with weak leadership and constant internal squabbles. By bribing the right people, funding the extreme members of this movement, and bombing campaigns against key military centers, we can significantly weaken their ability to fight off the Italians. Alright, everyone, so here we're at. We finally finished the goddamn war in Iran. I hate the Japanese with a burning passion, not because of the race, probably, but you never know. Um, but, like, we finally got him, and I had to make sure I used cons commands. Or I actually used a state transfer tool mod actually to give that whatever this region was by Luki Liberation Front to directly to give him here because that that's always, always bugged. But OFN looking very strong. Um, economy wise, we've got 14 billion in in reserves, surplus of 21 billion, real GDP growth just under 4 percent, um, inflation's at 5 percent, 5.3. Overall, not bad. And the Japanese sphere as well, they're hanging out, they're doing okay and. Ionized Pact has been successfully, I don't know, not contained, but they're not as big as they could be, probably, honestly. They, we, no one even got these guys, because I think they bugged out, too. Or they have David Sterling. You know, either one, whatever. But, um, that's pretty much going to be it for us here. I guess we have the United Arab States, but they haven't really done anything yet, so... It is what it is! If you enjoy the campaign, though, which, it, it's been, it's been fun. You know, we did a little trolling with the whole segregation stuff not too much but just enough to do to feel good about ourselves but yeah overall i thought and i i thoroughly enjoy every wallace campaign i do except when he gets impeached but like it's been a lot of fun it's been it's, it's just been a ton of fun like i love i love george wallace let's be real i love george wallace someone to admire but anyways if you enjoy the campaign please consider leaving a like subscribe if you're new check out my uh, discord link in the description below and i'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of uh, your day.